Well the honey's off the hives, the varroa treatments are on the bees and the pollen is starting to come in. Alright girls, you can stop dinging now, it's fine, thanks. We've, we've done that shot. Melissopalynology is the study of pollen in honey and specifically where it's coming from. When a honeybee visits a flower and collects the nectar from the plant, she will also consume some pollen from that plant too. And when she returns back to her hive, she'll share some of the nectar she's collected with her sisters. The nectar will be regurgitated from her honey sac along with some of the pollen grains from the plant. It will end up being suspended within the honey. Why does this uh, matter to me? Well, I want to learn something new and I'm curious as to what flora my bees are visiting in order to produce the honey. I've got this spring honey that I want to put under the microscope. It's from this colony here this spring. The trouble is I have no idea how to do it. Melissopalynology. Not one clue. Which is why I came across this new beekeeping book which I thought might be able to help me. Beekeeper's Guide for Pollen Identification of Honey and it's written by Mohamed El Laban. I'll just show you the back of the book so that you can pause the video and read the text. So just a bit of background, Mohamed teaches chemistry in a chemistry lab in Lebanon. He's also a beekeeper and learnt his craft from his father and kept bees in the mountains of Lebanon. So he has a great love of bees. It's a great advantage that uh, Mohammed is a teacher because I haven't got a clue, don't know what I'm doing. Never looked down a microscope before. How do I do it? I think I ought to start off with uh, my microscope. So follow me and see if we can identify my honey. Here we go, complete novice. Can I do it using Mohammed's book? Right, better get it unpacked. Awesome. Okay, now I've got my microscope set up. I just need to sort of calibrate the lenses for focusing on things for my eyes. Let's go and collect some pollen from a sunflower. Dad's got some sunflowers in his garden. I'll just see if he's got any sunflowers I can steal. So I'm going to take this sunflower head, snip it back down and put it into a plastic bag. Okay, here's the sunflower collected and I've just prepared a slide so that I can put the pollen into that little square there. I've got a little bit of something there. What I could do or should do is um, dismantle the flower and take the petals off so that the, the anthers are more exposed. Okay, I'm just warming through my cover slip and my slide with the pollen on it. Smallest amount of glycerin jelly in the middle of the slide. And that will melt. You'll see that the next bit is really tricky. I don't want to put my fingers over the slide, I just want to pick it up on its edges and gently place it over the top of the, the slide to try and create a nice seal. It's incredibly delicate. Not bad, not bad. Now we can that can sit on the hot plate for about 10 minutes and then we'll put it underneath the microscope. Okay, the slide's underneath the microscope. Let's check out sunflower pollen.
Oh, wow. Isn't that incredible? Gosh, I can see why people get into uh, microscopy. I love this, this is awesome. Okay, I'm more familiar now with my microscope, so let's get on to testing my honey. The first thing I have to do is I have to weigh five grams of my honey with a digital scale, stir it for five minutes to ensure homogeneity. Then after that, I have to add 100 mils of water and stir to dissolve it. So this now needs to be divided into some test tubes and then rotated in a centrifuge. Centrifuge for 15 minutes at speed 2,500 RPM. Looks like we're done. Once out of the centrifuge, the pollen sediment needs to be transferred to a prepared slide. Mohammed has a YouTube channel with tutorials on how to do this. I'll add a link in the description box down below. I've got a little hot plate. It's just 40 degrees C. It's just drying out 80 microliters of the sediment out of the test tube. As you can see, I'll just put the cover slip over. It's not the best job in the world. I think that's as good as I can get it. Science was never... I was much better at art and drama when I was growing up. Please forgive me if I get it a little bit wrong. Okay, I've got my uh, slide underneath the microscope. Let's have a look and see what different things I can find. That's an interesting one. There's only one way we can try to identify it, and that is by using a micrometer. Each division is one thousandth of a millimetre. Let me show you what it looks like with the ocular micrometer. So that's about 16 divisions. Okay, so what type of pollen is it? So the pollen covers 16 divisions using the micrometer. I have set my microscope at 400 times magnification. Each division is equivalent to 2.5. So the size of the pollen is 16 divisions times by 2.5 micrometers. That gives us 40 micrometers. This book gives you a very easy calculation you can work out in order to, to identify your pollen. So now we know the length of the pollen, all we need to do is look in the back of the book at the classification key. Pretty chunky, as you can see. These categories are green, blue, yellow and red. So we know that our pollen is 40 micrometres. It comes under the yellow category, which ranges from 32.5 to 50 micrometres. I have earmarked, I've gone through and I've found my pollen. Okay, are you ready for the big reveal? That type of pollen that we saw in that honey, it was. Time! I'm really getting into this. The pollen sizes are marked just underneath the pictures of the pollen. The pictures of the pollen are all Mohammed El Laban's own images unless otherwise cited. Each pollen has its own allotted number, the Latin name, the genus, and the common name of the plant. There's a photograph of the plant and images showing pollen under a microscope. The first bullet point gives you the pollen morphology and the bracket numbers indicate the size range of your pollen using a 400 times magnification at 2.5 micrometers. Sometimes 1000 times magnification is also indicated. The second bullet point tells you the flowering season of the plant and how frequently the bees visit it, frequently for time. We have the rewards the bees are collecting, so NP represents nectar and pollen. UR stands for underrepresented, which means how much pollen is normally represented in the honey. Bullet point number three lists the countries where the plant genus is distributed. Mohammed has provided a map for each listing. The fourth bullet point lists the countries the pollen from the plant is mentioned in the analysis of the honeys. Thought I might show you a few more images of some other types of pollen that I found in that spring honey sample that I took. 
I've really enjoyed working with Mohamed El Laban's book. It's given me the confidence to have a go at Meliso Palynology for the first time. A science I thought was totally out of reach to me. And because it directly relates to what forage my bees are visiting, my confidence of pollen identification will only improve over time and eventually help me become a better custodian of bees. Thank you for joining me as I dipped my toe into the world of Meliso Paleology. Hopefully I've said that right. If I have, it's a first. You have no idea. You really have no idea. I feel I've made my first step into the microscopic world of pollen identification. And I think it's also important not to feel intimidated by learning something new. So thank you for subscribing and liking. Thank you to all my new subscribers. If you've liked this video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, click the like button, and don't forget to share this video with anyone else who might be interested in beekeeping, the identification of pollen, microscopy, Meliso paleonology. It's all good. And until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye. Don't forget to tick the ding ding. Meliso paleonology, bring back pollen bees. Ready for the ding dings. Mm -hmm.